right, welcome to the studio review for class two. Um, we are in chapter three here, control flow and collections. And we wanna look at um, this studio called counting characters. So you're going to take a string and uh, count the number of times each character occurs. There might be five E's and two L's and four S's. Um, and we wanna be able to uh, count all of that and then produce something that looks like this in the console where each character that is discovered is print with the number of times that it appears in the string. Um, they have given us a sample string to use. This is a quote from the movie Hidden Figures. Um, so we can grab, you know, we'll be able to grab this and put it uh, in our code. And then um, they have a reminder here that we can create an array of characters from a string with this, you know, two care array string method. So uh, we'll take advantage of that in a little bit and be able to create that array of characters. So some things they want you to think about. So, um, the, well, they have an instruction here about you know how to create this project. I'll get to that in a second. But just uh, from the kind of you know top level, um, they want you to you know loop through the string one character at a time, store and or update the count for each character using an appropriate data structure. And then loop through that structure to print the results, um, as we saw in that screenshot below. So they asked the question, what kind of data structure should you use, right? Array list, hash map, array. Um, and there definitely is a best choice. And if we look at this, we can kind of you know see, hey, those look a lot like key value pairs, <laughs> right? Um, and those are easy to update because a hash map is indexed by key. So you can access the key you want directly and update its value. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to use a hash map. Um, they also talk about, you know, initializing the counts. It's like, you know, if it doesn't exist yet, it's the first time you've come across that letter, then your logic is going to look a little bit different than uh, what you would do if it already exists. So we're definitely going to need to put some conditional logic in to handle that. And um, they just remind you if you know if you need to review how to create a class, you can look in the instructions in uh, the class one studio area of a circle. And there are some bonus missions. You know, the first mission is just to create this, but uh, the bonus missions are uh, to prompt the user to end a string instead of using a hard coded string. Um, make those character counts case insensitive so it doesn't matter if they're capital or lowercase and then exclude non-alphabetic characters. So we wouldn't have something like a period or a comma or a space um, or an apostrophe. Um, and then the super bonus, uh, which is definitely difficult because you have to do some internet research to figure out how to do this, is to read the string in from a file. Um, I will show you how to solve this, uh, You know, one way to solve it. Um, and it's not something we're even gonna really cover in the course, as they say here, You know, reading from files. So this is, Definitely uh, a super, super bonus. Okay, so let's uh, get started here. Um, they tell you to uh, that you're going to go to the control flow and collections directory in your existing repository of Java web dev projects and create a new directory called studio and then create a new IntelliJ project from there. That means you can't start with Java web dev pr projects open in IntelliJ. Um, you actually want to have everything closed uh, out of IntelliJ because if we open this project, it's going to build this project and we actually want a new IntelliJ project and that's the only one we want to build. So the way I'm going to do this and we can kind of create the studio directory as we go. Um, so I'm going to come here and just say I want a new project from for IntelliJ. All right, so we need to give it a name. Um, counting characters. And uh, then we need to set the directory. And um, right now, if we are in the you know Java web uh, dev projects uh, repository um, that you have existing, we can find this control flow and collections folder. And all that exists in there now is chapter examples. So I'm going to create a new folder called Studio. And then that's where we actually want to put our project. So I'll say open. So now it says that um, it's going to be created at, you know, slash studio slash counting characters. Let me make sure I got that name right. Yep, counting characters. Okay, so um, I'm just going to keep Java. I'm going to just keep Maven. That's fine. I can change this to 17 uh, here. And uh, that's all I really want to do. I don't want any sample code. 
All right, so now we have a new project and you'll notice that at the top here, the top level is the counting characters project. That's what you want because you want it to be able to build just this project and not the greater um, project with all of the different um, classes worth of you know projects that um, you, you've been provided by Lunch Code. So um, in the source folder here in main and in Java, this is where we wanna right click and create our package. Um, and I'll create org.launchcode. And then inside there, I can start creating um, my classes. Okay. So um, they don't really give you a lot of instructions on where to go from here once you have this project existing, but um, you know, this is what you've been taught to do. So, so that's what I just did. I created org.launchcode, and now I'm gonna create a class and I'm gonna call it um, character count. Java. And the reason I'm going to do, I'm going to actually create three different classes. Um, and I'm going to, uh, for, for the bonus missions, because they have completely different solutions. Like, you know, I'd be refactoring so much that it would obliterate the original solution each time. So um, I'm just going to create three different classes. So we'll start with character count being the primary uh, mission that they've given you, not a bonus mission. Um, and we'll just, you know, review this. Okay, we're going to need to uh, take a string, a hard encoded string. We're going to need to loop through it one character at a time, store and update the count, and then loop through to print so that it comes out looking like this after we've collected all the information. And of course, the first thing we need to do if we want to be able to execute some code in this class is to create a main method. So I'm going to use my shortcut public st static void main uh, PSVM and hit the tab key. And then it creates that signature for me. And now I can put the code that I want to execute. So um, the first thing we need to do is to create our data that we're going to work with. We're going to hard code a string. So I'm just going to say string quote equals, and then um, paste in this uh, quote from here. And I'm going to, all right, there we go. All right, so we have our quote from Hidden Figures. And now we can uh, work on um, turning this quote into a character array. And you recall um, they gave us here, you know, an example of how you can do that to get the characters out of a string. So we'll use this to care array method. So I'll say um, I want a array of characters, and I'm going to call it character array just to keep it simple. And I'm going to say quote dot to care array. Okay, so now we have something that uh, we can iterate through to look at everything one character at a time. We also need to create something that will store our counts. So I'm gonna create a hash map. And um, remember with hash maps, uh, with collections like this, that you use the object um, classes, the wrapper classes instead of the primitives. So I'm gonna say character and integer instead of care and int. And that knows that it's going to store cares, cares and ints. Um, we'll call this um, counts. And I'm just going to make it a new empty hash map, um, just like that. Yep. OK. So we have everything we need now to get started um, on iterating through and adding values. So uh, to go through the, the character array, one character at a time, uh, to look at this quote character by character, uh, I'm going to use a for each loop, and I'm going to say for care letter um, out of the array care array. And that um, letter variable is now my, my local variable to represent each character as I loop through. I'll say, um, you know, first, let's check and see if it already contains it, right? So if counts um, contains key, and we'll say letter. So we're looking, we're looking at this letter that's in this quote, uh, does the hash map already have it as a key? And if that returns true, then all we need to do is update um, the count. But if it's not true, we actually need to establish it. Let's do this one first. I'm gonna say I want counts put, um, and I'm gonna give it the letter as a key and one is the value because if it, have, if it doesn't already exist, then we're putting it in there the first time. So the count is one, right? Um, so what if it does exist? So let's come back up here. We'll say counts.put. And this time we're going to put the letter um, 
and but we're going to just update it uh, to give it a new value. I'm going to say counts dot get letter. So it's going to go get the current value, and then add one to it. We'll just update it that way. Um, and that will take care of going through every single one, checking to see if it already exists or not, and either setting it for the first time with a one or adding one to the existing value um, at that key. All right, so that will take care of that. So all we have left to do is to print. We can say, um, you know, for, I'm gonna use another for each loop, and this time we're gonna use it on the hash map to go through all of the key value pairs. So here's the deal. Um, I'm going to need to be able to print both the key and the value, which means I need the full entry, the key value pair. Now, this you may recall from uh, the book and from lecture uh, is where we need the map class. So I'm going to, um, you know, hit tab here so that I can add that import statement at the top here. Um, otherwise, you can always go up there and, and type it up yourself. Um, but I need map.entry. And then I give it the um, types for the keys and <laughs> character. There we go. Uh, the types for the key value pairs. And um, I can say, I want to call this count, a single count out of the counts um, hash map. But what I actually want is not, I want the entry set because I need to actually loop through it as an array. I'm not looping through the hash map directly. So this, um, this, method of the hash map class entry set will give you an array of the key value pairs that you can then um, loop through. Okay, so we have that set. Now all we need to do is tell it what to do. So all we need to do is print. I'm going to use my shortcut SOUT with a tab key to get system.out.println. And I'm going to say count.getKey. Um, and then put uh, a colon and a space in there, and then I'll say count.getValue. Um, so to be clear on what it is that I'm doing, um, get key and get value are uh, methods of this map um, class where we're actually creating an entry type for count. So that means when we call this on count, it has to be a method of this. So these are not methods of the hash map class, they're methods of the map class for these entries. Um, so we look at the key value pair. This one will get the key. This one gets the value from the pair. Okay, so then it should print them one at a time. So let's go ahead and run this. I'm gonna right click up here and say run. And there we have it. Uh, we have all of these counts starting with a capital I and um, O and it goes all the way through. You see the punctuation in there. Okay, so we have successfully solved uh, the main part of this studio. Great. Um, I'm going to close this so we can see all the code again. Um, all right, so now um, it would be a good time for you to stop and uh, do a, a commit in your um, repo if you're coding along. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and move on because I've got a separate solution um, repo for this or, or a branch rather for this. Okay, so let's look at the bonus missions. I'm gonna do um, these three here all in one class and make these changes. And then we'll do the super bonus in a third class. So uh, in order to do that, I'm gonna need to create another class here. I'm gonna right click, say new and Java class. And I'm gonna call this uh, character count bonus. And uh, that creates a brand new class for us. I wanna execute things. So I will do public static void main and get a main method set up. Um, all right, we definitely can start with what we've already written. We're not going to change uh, most of it, like the logic and things too dramatically. So I'm gonna come back over here to this and I'm gonna borrow everything except for the string quote because the idea here is that we're actually gonna ask the user to provide us with some sort of quote. Um, so I'm gonna just copy this part and take it over. Okay, there we go. Okay, so uh, yeah, so here we need uh, to get user input. So that means, of course, getting um, a scanner object, right? So I'm going to say scanner input equals new scanner, and I forgot to bring the, uh, the import statement in, so there it is. Um, and we'll give it system.in to clarify that the type of scanner we want is for user input. 
All right, so now that we have that, we can ask the user for their quote. So I will first print something to the console to say, please enter a string to count its characters. It doesn't even have to be a quote, really. It could just be anything. Um, and then, of course, we will actually go get their response from the console and store it in a variable. So I'm going to create a variable called user string and then just uh, use input.next line. Now, you might wonder why not use next, because um, if you use next, it's going to take them in one word at a time uh, using all the spaces as delimiters. And we actually want it to treat the entire thing as a single string. So um, we'll use next line instead. OK. Um, so this will allow us to do that. So what that means is now, instead of actually creating a character array from you know, quote, which doesn't exist in this class, we'll create it from, from the user string instead. All right, so let's run this and make sure it works. Enter a string to count its characters. Okay, so I'm going to grab off of my clipboard uh, the quote we had before. There it is. And put that in. And there we go. We get the same exact result from that same quote, but this time we did it by virtue of entering in um, our own string with user input. Great. All right. So that's um, the first part of this bonus mission, but we need to keep going because there's two more, right? Let's go back over here and remind ourselves what they are. We want to make the character counts case insensitive. Okay. So the easiest way to do that is to just you know, get catch this user string right here before you split it into an array and um, go ahead and just say, you know, to lowercase. And that way we can um, actually, you know what? I'm changing my mind. I'm going to do uppercase. I think it'll look better. Okay. So we'll do two uppercase and uh, now we'll try this again. Let's run it. All right. And I'm going to put that same quote back in. And now we see that, um, you know, we have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, uh, all capitals, no lowercase, which means the, the counts are a little bit different because it's combining some of the ones that had both lower lowercase and uppercase. Uh, but that's exactly what we wanted. Um, okay, the very last part is to um, make it where we don't actually have anything except for alphabetic characters. Uh, okay, so it's actually outside the scope of this course uh, for you guys to learn regular expressions, um, which is the, probably the best way to do this, but um, we're going to do it in a fairly simple way. Um, anyway, it'll be fine. So I'm just going to create um, another string here. I'm going to say string alphabet, and I'm just going to put in A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. It's easier to just type it rather than say it. <laughs> There we go. All right, so I've got all the letters of the alphabet here in one string, and then we can use that to compare um, and make sure that it's in there. So, you know, it's okay to go through, you know, we make we make a character array out of it um, and, you know, go through and uh, loop through. And then this is where, you know, we only want this if else thing um, to execute if it is in fact a letter. So I'm gonna wrap um, this with another conditional and say, let's go check the alphabet string and um, dot. And if we can find an index um, that exists of that letter and it's greater than or equal to zero instead of negative one, um, then it's okay to go ahead and run this code and uh, either create it, create the key value pair for the first time or um, add, add to the value for what exists. And that way, if this, and we don't need an else because we're not gonna do anything at all if it's not a letter. So if it goes in here and it finds it, um, it does in fact exist, then it'll, then it'll add it, but if it's not, it won't. All right, so let's run it again, make sure this works. All right. There we go. So um, yeah, so now we see you know, no punctuation of any kind um, or spaces. We just see letters, so that's good. 
All right, so that is it for the, the uh, primary bonus missions. Um, so that's it for this class. The third one, the super bonus mission, I'm gonna create a new file for this and then we'll go and, and you know take a look at what we need to do. I'm gonna call this one character count super bonus. All right, and I'll create my main method. And then um, the idea here is that we are going to read in from a file, right? That's what it is, just read the string in from a file instead of hard coding it or asking the user to provide it. Um, so in order to do that, I'm gonna create the file right here. I'm just gonna say new file and I'll call it uh, quote.txt. And then I'm just gonna add um, a quote to it. And um, we'll head back over here. And then we'll be able to work with that. Okay, so um, we have the quote now in a file. Um, we can move on with solving this thing. So um, we're, we're definitely gonna use uh, some of the things that we used in the previous one. Um, like for example, we'll still, you know, make it where it's only uh, alphabetical. So I'm, I'm gonna start with our solution from the original bonus here. Um, and we'll see kind of what we're gonna do here to change it. Um, we're gonna be using a scanner, but we're not gonna use it like this uh, with system.n. Um, and we're not you know, prompting for anything, so I can take this out. So let's just start with our alphabet so we can use that later. Okay, so um, we're going to do uh, the, you know, a different approach to pulling in the file. Um, I'm gonna start by creating a uh, string variable that will actually store the quote once we retrieve it. And, um, and then we can actually uh, do the, what's needed to extract this um, from the file. And the first thing we have to do is actually create a file object. But um, we're gonna be using uh, stuff that requires us to actually handle exceptions. So we need to try catch block. So I'm gonna set that up first and say, first, we're gonna try doing it the way we were hoping to do it but we'll uh, be sure to check for this um, file not found exception, just in case it can't find the file. And if we do that, we'll just print some sort of a message that says, you know, an error occurred when trying to read quote from file. All right, so that'll just handle, you know, just in case something doesn't work quite right while we're trying to go get this file. Um, so, uh, but if it works properly, this is how it goes. We need um, the file class, which we can import from java.io. Um, so I'm adding that import statement there. And we need um, to call it just, you know, text from file is, you know, whatever you want to call it. That's what I'm going to call it. And say new file. And then we're going to give it the path to that file that we created. So source, main, java, org launch code, and then um, quote.txt. Okay, so um, that's it. And then we will, um, you know, create the scanner that we're looking for to actually scan the file for the information. I'm going to call it my reader. You can call it anything you want. It's a file reader. And we'll say new scanner, but this time, you know, when you do user input, you give it system.n, right? Um, this time we wanna give it that file object that we just created, text from file. And then we can uh, go through and, um, you know, say, if there is um, something, if it actually has content, you found the file, we got past that, you know, we're not throwing that exception. Um, but let's just check and say what, you know, does it have next line? And if it does, um, we will set the quote from file. Remember that's that string we set up here as an empty string. We'll go ahead and set that to be my .next line. So um, it just validates first and then um, actually uh, sets it with, um, with this value. 
And then uh, we can just, you know, close the reader at that point because this is the only place we're using it. Okay. So down here, um, previously we had, you know, had that user string from the user input. So now we're going to change it to be the quote from file. And so everything lights up up here um, because we're using it now. Um, and you can see uh, that everything else from there is, is the same, right? Um, it's just going to perform the same operations that it did before. It's just that we got the, the text from a different source. Let's go ahead and give this a run and uh, see how it goes. And it worked right there. We've got um, that uh, count. It's, uh, you know, we still had our other bonus missions in place. So it's just the letters. There's no punctuation. It's all uppercase. Um, but this time we retrieved it from a file instead of using user input. All right, that has been it for um, all three of these parts. I hope this has been helpful. I will see you in the next one. Thank you.